Hello, I'm Yong Bei. I'm from Hi-Fi Immersion YouTube channel. And next to me is Mr. Louis Desjardins from Kronos Audio. Hello. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? Fine. I'm uh, very, very happy to be here in Korea to meet uh, our friends, to meet you again, yeah, of course. Yeah, likewise, yeah. And uh, to meet some of our customers and to be bringing to you this, this, this series of new products that uh, we're on tour to show. And it's uh, very exciting for us to share this with you today. Thank you for coming here. Welcome to Korea. When did you get here? Well, I arrived here uh, last Wednesday. Uh, so today is uh, sun, it's a Saturday yeah. for people to know what, what that means. So a few days, four days. Yeah. And uh, it's always such a pleasure to go to be in Korea. It's probably my favorite country in Asia. And uh, it, it, it's, it's just always so much fun. So first, uh, I had a stopover in Las Vegas to install the new Phono in, in a customer's home with uh, Bell Parish of GPT, our distributor. And then uh, we did the Hanoi show in Vietnam. Then we had a presentation in Malaysia, and then we had a presentations and customer visits in the uh, Philippines and Manila. And now we're here in Korea, and, yeah. and, and it's a, always, like I said, always a pleasure. We keep the best for last. Oh, thank uh, you. How is the relationship with GTT Audio? Oh, fantastic. Bill is a great guy. Uh, he's a, a true believer in uh, analog. He's a true believer in Kronos. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's doing a fantastic job. Uh, they're, they're very busy down there. So, uh, it, it's, no, it's great. And, um, he, I would say that we're very fortunate in having, uh, really the best distributors in every market. Yeah. Uh, and, and that includes SI Works with Mr. Lee here, uh, -huh. uh in, in, uh, South Korea. Yeah. It's, it's really a, a privilege for us to work with SI Works. So how long have you worked with Mr. Lee? It's been about 10 years and um, Mr. Lee is, is really, I think, totally dedicated to analog. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's very important that the distributor understands yes. uh, because analog is a little more complex mm -hmm. on the setup right. and requires uh, knowledge as to what a turntable is, what a cartridge is, what a tone arm is. But also, the, his choice of electronics, his choice of speakers, uh, marry very well with uh, the analog system. Uh -huh. yeah. These are new products, right? So you have perpetual turntable. That's right. That's super SCPS P, right? That's right. All right. And then we have the Discovery Phono stage, right? Which is a three chassis uh, unit. So this is the signal part, which has its own suspension, yeah. its own chassis with suspension, uh, a, 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 a carry over from the technology we use for the turntable and uh, a dual power supply. So monoblock yeah. uh, power supplies for the phone. Yeah. And we have here the power supply to the turntable or the SCPS, depending if somebody has the SCPS or not. But this is a power supply that uh, the AC-DC converter, okay. in other words. So that comes with the perpetual turntable. So this AC-DC converter yeah. there, and then it goes to super cap or the turntable. To the turntable direct, itself, turntable that's right. Directly. That uses linear power supply? Of course, yes. So, so the, the, this power supply is, is fully linear. There's no switch mode in this. And, um, uh, the, so the SCPS for people who don't know is a DC accumulator. We yeah. use, uh, super capacitors as a way of storing energy. Mm -hmm. Uh, it stores a lot of energy, uh, compared to regular capacitors. And it basically works as a battery. So in this unit, we have two banks of super caps uh, while one is being used the other bank is charging and then they replace each other so they're in constant uh, flux and it basically separates the turntable from the wall from the the, the, the grid so uh, it, it's it's sort of like a battery power supply, but the very low impedance and very high power reserve. It's very different in behavior than batteries. 
but it allows us independence from the grid. There's a third bank of super caps in this unit that is the output bank, because since we're changing banks, there's one bank that is always there to do the, the continuity so that there's no interruption. And in the turntable itself, we have two banks, again, of super caps. So one for the lower platter and another one independently for the upper platter. So we have super caps very close to the motor to make sure that we have the maximum control uh, on the back EMF of the motor system. Okay. SCPSP, how is it different from SCPSD? It is the same. It is the same circuit. Yeah. It is the same technology. Uh, the only thing is basically the case is different. So where Discovery, we did not have the supercapacitors within the turntable. We had uh, this uh, super cap. Right. That is, but we do have super cap in the power supply of oh. Discovery. So in the end, you're looking at three banks of super caps in series. Yeah. Whether it's on the Discovery or whether it's on the Perpetual, it's just done a little bit differently. What's the improvement over SPS1? It's a big difference. So we, Kronos was the first company to utilize supercapacitors in the audio industry, yeah. as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, we use it uh, to control, to better dampen the motors, yeah. to have a better grip on the motors. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when we introduced this uh, 10 years ago, about maybe 11 years ago, uh, supercaps were a little bit of a new technology. Right. And every, the entire circuit had to be designed for this monitoring of charge and the switching of charge and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, uh, very luckily, there are ICs mm -hmm. that are made to control uh, and monitor yeah. the charging of the supercapacitors. Mm -hmm. So we could go a lot further in the design of this supercap but using fewer parts and more reliability, more stability, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So we're very, very happy with this uh, unit. Okay.